hello. Is it working? Are you hearing? Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm Vinicius from the Brazilian IGF. Uh, I will be in the position of moderating the session. Uh, we tried to find a better person, but it was impossible. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, actually, um, so as I, as far as I know, we have Makane here from African IGF. We have Julian from the Colombian IGF. We have Dustin from the USA IGF. We have Jennifer from the Asia Pacific IGF. And am I missing someone? No, am I? Of course, <laughs> of course, I, I will be fired. <laughs> uh, Flavia from the Brazilian IGF, <laughs> and and from the Palo IGF. Can can you say your name in, in the microphone, please? This is Barbara from Nepal IGF. Thank you. So, and Mary from Nigeria IGF. Well, Paul from uh, Namibia IGF. <laughs> okay, and um, so. Okay, so we have a session with many speakers. That's good. <laughs> we can. Ah, okay. So she, he's not speaker. Uh, so uh, this is the the session f entitled like uh, entitled as access and b access beyond mere connectivity. <laughs> Sorry, missing the the correct title. Um, and uh, we set this session uh, among the NRIs, among the the national and regional initiatives. Uh, so we have many of them here that just work together to, to put up this session. And uh, we have uh, built a proposal together with many policy questions, with many issues that we discussed through the NRI's list. So I will just um, read the policy questions we have for this session, and then I will pass the, the word for the speakers, okay? So this in this session, we'll deal with uh, what are the main persistent challenges related to connectivity and pervasiveness of internet in local contexts? Two, what is the current status of internet, pres internet presence distribution in your region and how the multi-stakeholder dialogue contributes or not to it? Within your local context, in a multi-dimensional framing, social, economic, political, cultural, etc., what practices can be observed in the use of the internet and how they impact, affect, transform realities. And we have a big one about the rural areas. So we have uh, challenges and obstacles for the case, a specific case of rural areas. So what the situations had to face to achieve the implementation and sustainability of the network. Uh, so we have these policy questions. The, the speakers here, they already know the policy questions because we are working together on them. Uh, I'll just pass the, the word for them. Uh, do you want to volunteer? So Makani is the first volunteer. We can, we can start with him. Then uh, I will be passing the word for, for the others, okay? So Makani, Thank uh, you, around Mr. four or five minutes. Yes, not me. don't worry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Makan Fai. I'm the secretary of the African Internet Governance Forum of the African Union. I am uh, based in Dakar, Senegal. Uh, available and affordable internet access is a pre prerequisite for Africa to participate in the digital economy. According to the World Internet Statistics, Africa currently has the fastest growing proportion of internet users. And according to ITU sources, the number of individuals using the internet has been growing steadily, estimated at 25% in the last 10 years. Uh, in a study by Afrinic, we know also that Afrinic has issued over 100 million IP addresses during the past 10 years, and is currently working with the internet stakeholders in the continent to drive IPv6 deployment and preparedness. A study was undertaken also by uh, the Internet Society Africa Bureau promoting the Africa internet economy, uh, where it was uh, indicated that about one third of Africans have access to the internet, and that internet contributed to the GDP up to 1.1%. Uh, the successes uh, are as follows. Especially, it is linked, they are linked to the mobile money. 
where 80% of worldwide mobile money users are in Africa. And you have some successful applications uh, on mobile payment, on movies, on uh, healthcare, and renewable energy. And the challenges are uh, that internet businesses are not growing as fast and as big as in the developed world in 2018. And the study indicated that also e-commerce businesses for Middle East and Africa was just 1%. And this was due to the fact that two in five businesses don't use email and one in three businesses don't have website. And uh, I, we have uh, the roadblocks as uh, to end the presentation. For the startups, issues that impact ability to start new businesses are the environment that nurtures innovation and, and entrepreneurship, which is not mostly available, and also the venture capital. On online businesses, the condition for online business offerings, access and cost of access, there is blockering, uh, blocking and filtering in some countries. There are intermediary liability, there are internet shutdowns sometimes, security, privacy, monetization, uh, skills development also, some countries have started to tax uh, these online businesses. And the business environment, the general ease of doing business, uh, when we look at it online or offline, African countries rank very low in ease of doing business. Thank you, Mr. Moderate. Thank you, Makane. Um, anybody else? Julian? So, Julian, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Julian Casas Buenas, and I'm uh, talking on behalf of the Colombian AGF. And um, uh, our uh, contribution in this session will be um, uh, uh, to share uh, the different views from the stakeholders that uh, participated in our last meeting in September this year when we discussed the digital gap and rural access. So uh, we uh, found that um, 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 uh, and tried to, to, to cluster um, the um, uh, challenges and um, obstacles uh, re uh, regarded to regulation, infrastructure, uh, sustainability, and organizational models uh, based especially in uh, community networks. Uh, we had the participation from the private sector, government, civil society, academia, as well as the Colombian IGF community. Uh, regardless uh, regulation, uh, um, there is an opportunity at this moment to analyze a new bill for the ICT sector that is under discussion to introduce proposals that can increase the benefit and social impact through especially the spectrum access and management. Um, regulation is very hard in terms of uh, quality uh, of services in Colombia and then um, uh, the private companies um, uh, has uh, obstacles to uh, implement uh, or extend their uh, services uh, to these areas where, for instance, the power generation is complex. Uh, so the chances of being fined are high to, due to the unavailability of the service. A proper regulation can provide easy access to spectrum that is not used in rural areas and is a key factor for the de deployment of community networks. Um, facilitate the implementation of pilot projects to evaluate the regulation needed for the deployment of community networks into a frame of legality is also an issue. Um, Defining community networks uh, um, as a non-for-profit initiatives that connect communities at affordable costs. Um, it is a common of the community who is responsible for its design, implementation, and sustainability. Regarding infrastructure, um, the group, uh, I, the Colombian IGF, thinks that it's important to combine different technologies that are more suitable for different situations in rural areas. 
uh, bringing broadband to rural areas and use technology that guarantee the stability of the networks is very important. This includes the use of solar energy to avoid costs of energy that are very common in these areas. Sharing infrastructure, also a key issue especially for these areas. Regarding sustainability, uh, the involvement of the community in the design, implementation and operation of the networks is a key factor for its success. Community need to feel that they are part of these initiatives in order to get appropriated of the projects. Local contents are also very important for community networks. Contents and open data that are of interest uh, for the community and that not require external internet access at all to be accessed. It is important to think in another ways of the playing infrastructure, looking into new technologies like TV white spaces, mesh networks, and free and open software and hardware. The models should be designed not to depend and subsidize to guarantee their sustainability. It's common that those projects that are based in subsidized fails because it's not value by the community. It is proven that community is willing to pay when they see the value of having the services they need to improve their quality of life. It's important to have different regulation models and think about how to make them self-sustainable. It's important that the projects consider a good component on ICT appropriation for the communities. Bringing Internet of Things technology to be more productive and efficient, uh, uh, it's also an opportunity. Share Internet access with the communities from universities and private companies, ex in example, during not working hours. And reduce access costs to connectivity infrastructure. In, for instance, in Colombia, to fiber optic that is available on urban areas to extend the connectivity uh, to these areas. Um, finally, uh, you uh, should not only measure the return of economic investments, you should also consider the social return of investment. Universal access funds should facilitate access to their resources and leverage these projects, uh, especially in rural areas. Regarding organizational models, um, it's important to uh, define what the real needs of the users, uh, identify the demands, and create models to cover those demands. It's important to establish new models where civil society initiatives can be linked to multiple stakeholders to run the infrastructure in rural areas. Thank you. I was just taking a look in the chat and moderating session. Um, do we have a uh, next volunteer to speak? Dustin, Mary, Jennifer, Dustin? Dustin, please. So um, mostly focus on the, the third policy question about the, the multi-dimensional framing um, because we really took a, a holistic approach to the discussion at the IGF USA and we, we brought in uh, as many people as we could from different perspectives from people operating community networks um, both in urban and rural areas to the large ISPs we brought in city government officials and federal government officials, um, as well as academics, nonprofits, and libraries to discuss different solutions to address the, the connectivity issue that is, is still an issue in the US. I think um, one problem that we have um, within the US is that most people having these discussions in the internet governance space take for granted that they have connectivity and kind of forget that m even in urban areas there are a lot of people that don't have access to the internet. Um, and especially when you look at the, the indigenous reservations and the lands um, within the U.S., um, they have uh, some huge connectivity issues that aren't just limited to access to the internet but also um, other infrastructure like uh, a power, for example, and electricity. Um, but 
but like I said, we went beyond the discussion of providing access to discuss not only, you know, of course, the importance of capacity development and um, digital literacy, but also focusing on ensuring that the, that connectivity and that digital literacy can actually be applied and used in a way that actually benefits the peoples and communities that are being connected. So, so we kind of focused on the different services and opportunities that are made available that will increase the, the value of that connectivity and justify more programs and get more interest in continuing to uh, spread that connectivity to the rural and indigenous areas as well as some of the inner city and urban areas where um, in some of the major cities in the US there's still 40% of the city without access to the internet, um, Detroit uh, specifically. So we had all of these different approaches so it's, it's hard to come away with necessarily um, one or even several solutions but ultimately what we, what we focus on is the need for each solution to consult the community that it's working in and identify the needs of that community, what services that they'll benefit from, what capacity development is needed not only to deploy the network but also to, to use the network and to build services on top of that. Um, and you know, ultimately if we had to kind of sum this up into one idea, it's that the people in the communities need to be at the center of bringing this connectivity to those that are unconnected. Um, otherwise, uh, it's not going to ensure that they receive all of the benefits while also having, you know, their, their culture and their, their local needs respected. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, sorry for the confusion before, but we are experiencing some problems with the remote participation. Actually, we have Mr. Roberto Zambrana from Bolivia trying to participate remotely, and we are not being able to set it yet, but we are trying. Okay, Roberto, if you're listening to us, we are trying to, to uh, make it viable for you to speak remotely, okay? Um, so thank you, Makane, Julian, and Dustin that, who, that spoke until now. And we have uh, another volunteer now, Flavia. Flavia, please, Flavia. Morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank to the IGF organization for opening this space for sharing experience. And I think it's important to start by justifying why in Brazil uh, to talk about internet access, we have to talk also about uh, data cap planes, zero rating, and uh, consequently also net neutrality. Whether it's in Latin America or in USA, the concerns about net neutra neutrality have been justified by the recent events. Even if multiple countries from Latin America, such as Chile, Colombia, Brazil, Mexico, have their law which guarantee net neutrality. As we saw on the last two editions of LAC IGF, actually they haven't been enough for this right be effective. Zero rating commercial practices always associated with frequently used data planes uh, through mobile devices were adopted in a uniform manner in Latin America, as we can conclude with the research done in partnership between Derechos Digitales e Intervozes Coletivo Brasil de Comunicação Social in 2017. These planes uh, have represented a threat to the neutrality recognition as a right and consequently have also been threatening the keeping of the internet as an open resource, compromising the digital inclusion finalities and its innovation. The justification for the indiscriminate acceptance of zero rating plans by governments and regulators is the lack of broadband infrastructure 
and the significant challenges of investments we face. However, for the companies, the zero rating has been a valuable uh, commercial strategy to monetize the scarcity. Moreover, for uh, them to recall personal data in big scale, exploring them basi based on algorithmic mechanisms with no transparency and ethic. Besides compromising net neutrality, this practice discriminates data package according to the application, in case Facebook and WhatsApp, data cape plans with zero rating practices have been representing the disrespect to uh, the service continuity principle, which, is, uh, which in Brazil is established by uh, Marco Civil da Internet, our law about internet, as a consequence of recognizing the internet an essential service. At the same time, there is a drawback considering the balance between what we sit and pay, including our personal data, and economic profit. As you can see, uh, as we have in the researchers, the major part of lower social classes, 80 percent uh, access the, the internet exclusively uh, by mobile devices uh, with planes, data cap planes and zero rating. Um, according to Anatel in Brazil, the, the regulatory uh, agency in Brazil, there are 220 million connections and uh, 190 uh, are through cell, cell phones. Also, the zero rating practice has had the effect of accommodating governments when it comes to formulating public policies that promote not only the universalization of the telecommunication infrastructure, infrastructure but also the internet access service. It's important to emphasize the lack of transparency when it comes to contracts among applications providers and connectivity providers that have a huge impact on the competition law because those companies invariably uh, control the market share not only of connection service but also of application services. In Brazil, unfortunately, although uh, Marco Civil regulation has established a control system uh, with the participation of CGI, the fact is that there's no monitoring or even punishment for the violations of net neutrality. Finally, we must pay attention to the debates that are now taking place in the ITU plenipotentiary as there is a tendency for telco regulators that uh, do not operate in a multi-stakeholder system to regulate common internet services. There is therefore a risk that the regulation of internet services uh, will be marked by commercial interests uh, with less discussion about fundamental rights, which would be a consider considerable loss that goes against what was established in the Declaration of Sao Paulo, signed by over 110 countries at the Net Mundial meeting held in uh, April 2040 in Brazil. And I'm Flavia Lefebvre from uh, Internet Steering Committee in Brazil. I represent there uh, the civil society. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Flavia. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we have we still have Mary, Mary, you are, are you speaking right? Okay, we still have Mary, Jennifer, Babu, and uh, Pierre Boni. <coughs> Is Pierre Boni here? Okay. No. Okay. okay. So three and actually Roberto Zambrana uh, in the online. Sorry. I'll jump on the end as well if I can. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, may we have Mr. Roberto Zambrana from the online participation? Yes, we can, Roberto. Can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. I wonder if you can hear me. I don't have uh, yes, we can. I only have an answer from you. Please, please someone, someone write in the chat, please, that we can hear him. A 
every mic, everybody make a sound. Uh, well, first of all, yes. Good morning to everybody. Uh, in my country, probably the same happens uh, in a region and in some other regions of the global south. The main challenge remains to achieve universal connectivity, which is not only means deploying infrastructure, which up to date has accelerated a lot thanks to the evolution of mobile communications, but which still s maintains an old business model for internet services, which is not affordable for the ma majority. Let me explain a little bit about it. A large number of people have a mobile devices. Most of these devices are intelligent and therefore capable of accessing internet services. With uh, recent technologies such as LTE Advanced, which allows speeds of several megabits per second. However, the big problem is that uh, the service is still paid for units of information transmitted, I mean megabytes, sold as megabyte packages. The users of this service can barely have a sufficient budget that allows them to access a few megabytes per day which may be enough to use applications such as WhatsApp and access their social networks, but it is impossible that this type of service allows them to access other enriched content, to educate themselves, to work, to access a government service, or ultimately to entertain themselves. It is ironic that the practices of zero rating are not the real threat to the net neutrality, uh, but are these obsolete models of commerce commercialization of services, of internet services, which force and conditions the users to use a small variety of services and content. And that definitely does not mean being fully connected to internet. In this aspect, the multi-state uh, holder model is uh, still in the process of maturing so that it becomes an influential instance of a public policy on the internet. At least, at least that's what is happening in my country. Still, the dialogue and decisions are made between two, these two main actors, I mean, the government and the ISPs. However, the voice of the citizens is growing more and more every day, and despite we recently had our first IGF last year, uh, we believe that the demands of the community ca have been effectively, effectively channelized. And uh, little by little, the other actors are now aware of these issues. We believe that our second IGF, which is coming in the few weeks, will put demands on the ISPs and also in the government, and we hope that this positive influence will continue to be effective. Internet is not longer the cyberspace which was uh, believed as a, a as a parallel space to the environment we will we live the internet has become a part of our own environment where we develop and live through the internet we learn we work we access to public services we entertain ourselves or even we fall in love in some cases so the impact of being disconnected from the internet is very high and today it generates a huge gap between those who are not connected among with uh, those who are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberto. And, oh. Some sound. <laughs> okay, can you, can, you write, can you write it on the chat? Just, can you write on the chat just thanking him, please? Yes, thank you. So Roberto is not hearing us anymore. Um, so we have uh, Nepal, Nigeria, and uh, Asia Pacific. We'll go. Jennifer? Okay. Let's try to speed up a little, people, because we, ha we are just running out of time, okay? <laughs> um, thank you, Vinicius. Um, my name is Jennifer Chung. Um, I'm part of the Secretariat for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Um, for our ninth edition, actually, this year, we were hosted for the very first time in the Pacific region in the beautiful city of Port Vila, Vanuatu. Um, as you all know, Asia is a very diverse region, not only culturally, languagely, um, in, in development, and it's also very, very diverse in terms of geography. We were the 
first time very close and, and, and intimate with the challenges and opportunities of the small island developing states. So a few key points, especially on, on terms of, of connectivity and access and beyond that, is the unique geography of, of, of these small island developing states. So often the last mile connectivity becomes a, a major barrier to access, especially in, in, these, in these developing states. And for countries like Vanuatu, who experience uh, many cyclones in a year, and they experience like 10 to actually over 50 earthquakes per day, some are felt, some are not felt, uh, this is a really big problem. Um, Cyclone Plam, which is one of the big cyclones they experience in the area, um, this year uh, actually had an impact of over 62% of the GDP for Vanuatu for the year. So these vulnerabilities are real. There's trillions of dollars that impact um, disasters that cost Asia, according to the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. Um, this impact is very real on a very uh, a real level and on the budgetary scale. Um, for cost and sustainability, for us in the region, there is immense opportunities. For the very first time in 2017, we had more than 50% of the world's users, uh, internet users in our region, but actually only less than 50% of the people in our region are connected to the internet. So this potential really calls for reliable, robust, and high-speed access to the internet in order to be able to excel in this digital age. So enabling access is not only building this infrastructure or connectivity, it also refers to other aspects such as access to knowledge, access to information, the affordability of this access, the accessibility of this access, inclusion and also digital literacy. Um, we were talked about um, the use of emerging low-cost network solutions such as the community networks which not only provide access but also empower local communities to become an active part of internet operations. Um, the provision of this access should be backed by meaningful local content and demand-driven solutions that propel the internet usage in the region and in the country. So it was um, called for that in the Pacific sub-region that governments uh, should be encouraged to play a more assistive role in creating an enabling policy environment to give business incentives and expanding the access. Um, access and connectivity is a really big part in, in, um, in Vanuatu. We were also having the youth uh, join us during the, the, the regional IGF for the youth IGF and they, they told us that to them, internet is, is something that's not experienced every day. They, they, they have this concept that perhaps it's something to do with platforms, but more often than not, hand in hand, not only providing access, providing meaningful capacity building opportunities for, for, for local um, communities is really uh, the key point here. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. May we have Mary? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would um, just go straight to the point. West Africa, as well as my country, Nigeria. I am Mary. Uh, I coordinate the West Africa Internet Governance Forum, as well as um, convene the Nigeria Internet Governance Forum. Um, for us, this year in 2018, um, uh, for for West Africa, we're, we're looking at. Um, uh, uh, we held our meeting in one of the remotest um, uh, uh, countries, or one of the Low, 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 low income countries, uh, Bukuna Faso. And um, the topic was development of uh, digital economy and emerging technology in West Africa. I will only talk about the access, what we told our members and what we encourage our members to do. We said on access and infrastructure, we urge our state, member states, of ECOWAS to implement the ECOWAS Reverse Supplementary Act on universal access so that the money will not be, when you have collected money for universal access, shouldn't be lying idle. It should be implemented. It should be used for the, rural, the unconnected and underconnected. That's one of the things we encourage them. And we also looked at um, uh, interconnection uh, of the networks within the, within the region so that our people will have access to the in internet. So there's also the roaming regulation that ECOWAS has come up with so that we can have um, one network. And um, we encourage also the redundant international fiber optics to be linked to those that are linked so that when there's um, 
there's a, a court in one country, the other country can keep up so that they, they, it's just beyond connectivity is access. And um, that um, we encourage member states to, to do the, in, to, to, to uh, invest on infrastructure, uh, internet exchange points to, 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 to uh, have access, uh, I mean data exchanged um, regularly. So uh, those are things we talked about at the, at the, on the infrastructure and access at the West African level. At, Afri at, at our local level, Nigeria, we did one internet women IGF, after our national IGF. We, we also did uh, what we call the, the women IGF and inclusion. And uh, it was only for women and those women that are marginalized and most of them from the northern side of our country where there are problems, there are uh, you know, insurgency, and there are IDPs. So one of the things were, that came up was that there was the issue of languages. The language is, a, is an issue. So um, the women were asking, how can we know, how can we be connected with uh, uh, figures or, 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 or pictures so that when we press since we cannot type in English, uh, the manufacturers were challenged to see how we, to, to bring out access. They also told us about the level of literacy, that the li literacy level is very low, so uh, it affects um, connection, connectivity. Then the tradition, some said they were, they, they, they've witnessed divorces because a woman posted her picture on Facebook. So it's not allowed. So those are things that uh, then there's the digital, uh, digital literacy, they emphasize that there should be lit digital lit literacy capacity so that there will no policies that are upcoming. And another thing was the adjacent, adjacent infrastructure, power. If there's no power, even when the internet is available in your area, then it's not accessible. Okay, so adjacent information, uh, 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 infrastructure. So um, uh, we also, uh, for our national IGF, we're looking at internet as catalyst for good governance. And good governance is only when you share information from government to the people, people will know that there's good governance. And where the information is not shared, people will not know. So let's use the internet to share, to open up, let the citizen be able to challenge the rulers, the leaders, uh, uh, on what they do. So those are some of the things we talked about beyond just mere connectivity. There are other things. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, and thank you for remembering us the the focus of the this session also. Um, I think we have still Nepal. Okay, please, Babu. Thank you. <coughs> this is Babu from Nepal IG for the record. Uh, I'll go uh, very briefly on uh, all the points, uh, very briefly. Uh, on first issue that uh, geography is one of the uh, most critical issue uh, in, in Nepal. Out of uh, our uh, geographical uh, landscape, 58% uh, is high mountain, plus 25% uh, uh, high Himalayas covered all the time uh, by snow and only 17% geography is plain land. So uh, connecting last mile is a very difficult uh, issue in, in our geography. And another issue is uh, uh, digital literacy is uh, another issue that uh, we have facing. Uh, we don't have uh, local content uh, online, uh, very less uh, e-commerce uh, use, very less e-governance use, and very less uh, use uh, by uh, academic institutions or uh, from learning perspective. So uh, from that perspective, when there are not much content, uh, people are not coming uh, into uh, online. That is another issue. Uh, third one is <coughs> um, we have... Uh, uh, number of taxes levied on internet service. For example, we have uh, 
uh, USF 2%, royalty 4%, 13% balloted tax, 13% another uh, telecommunication service charge uh, started by this year, uh, altogether uh, import of uh, tax on import of bandwidth, altogether around 35-36% uh, taxes. That made uh, a bit uh, expensive uh, of use of internet in, in Nepal. So this is uh, another issue that is uh, uh, causing harm on this access and uh, recently we had one survey uh, uh, on accessibility uh, only uh, around 19 percent of uh, person with disability uh, they know about the internet it's not about the using of internet then uh, knowing internet is just uh, by 19 percent around person with disability so these kind of things are uh, very uh, pertinent in, in uh, these issues then uh, while talking about the presence of internet in, in uh, uh, around 80% or 85% um, uh, are used uh, uh, by, through mobile communications uh, like uh, 2G, 3G including uh, 4G in some uh, uh, city areas and uh, very low around 10% only meaningful broadband uh, uh, by uh, service providers and uh, we have uh, cultural diversity, we have uh, more than 100 uh, linguistic uh, community groups. So because of that also, they are not able to uh, get uh, into that disconnection. So this is uh, one of uh, another area uh, 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 of this. And uh, since last year, we started uh, Nepal IGF as well. And uh, interestingly, uh, we are very successful on bringing more stakeholders uh, into uh, this uh, Nepal IGF platform. And this year, uh, uh, more than 190 percent in person participation were there, and out of them, also uh, uh, on second day, around 50 uh, persons with disability uh, people were also participating in, in that uh, discourse, and transgender uh, uh, people also. Uh, joined this. Uh, it was very nice to have them and we hope that uh, because of this kind of uh, uh, multi-stakeholder engagement uh, will definitely contribute into the excess uh, uh, in future as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nepal. Thank you, Babu. Um, so I think uh, the... Am I missing someone? Uh, are you speaking? Okay, so please. <laughs> Yeah, to, uh, I said I wasn't going to speak, but I'll speak quickly. Uh, I'm Paul Rowney. I'm from Namibia. I'm uh, with the NAM IGF. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I, I believe in Namibia, and I can speak for Namibia, that we could quite easily have uh, almost all of our citizens connected and have access. It's not a technology issue. Uh, what we struggle with is having a legislative and policy framework that allows the different players to uh, participate and uh, to create those access points. Uh, the mobile operators obviously have a big voice and uh, they stifle uh, innovation in the policy process. It's not really about money. Uh, we, we seem able to fund other infrastructure projects. Uh, we build massive ports, massive airports, big road infrastructures, uh, but we don't uh, focus on the backhaul. Uh, there's a belief that this should be left to the private sector so the state doesn't really get involved. But if the uh, backhole is there, the last mile can be easily addressed with the community networks and uh, other players. So we're, we're really failing our citizens uh, in getting them connected. Uh, we, 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 we really need focus. Uh, we have policies. We have some good policies, uh, but they're not really implemented. And uh, yeah, so I, th I think it, it, it is easy for us to achieve 100% inclusivity and access. Uh, but we radically need to change the way that we engage and think, and uh, we need our governments and policymakers uh, to have a better understanding of what we're trying to achieve and the benefits that this brings to the citizens uh, so that uh, we engage differently to make this happen and a reality. Thank you, Paul. So um, we, have many, we had many speeches here, and, and it was very, very good. 
I think. Um, many, many things uh, regarding infrastructure, community networks, and access in general in a broad view, and, and, and the practices, digital practices around this, uh, this environment. So I think it was a, a, a very good set of presentations we had, we had now. And so we, we have uh, still some minutes lacking for, for lasting for the session. Uh, so uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, we have a first question. That's good. So we, we will have uh, 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 some sequence of questions, and then we I, I can pass to you all to make some, some, some sort of final remarks and answer the questions, and we, we end the, the session. OK? Thank you. Please. Hi, my name is Ariane. I'm from Brazil. My question is from Mary. Uh, like Flavia said, in Brazil we have a huge number of Brazilians that don't have access to internet and it's caused by uh, several things like physical barriers and social barriers. And one thing catch my attention in your speech because you said that in your country uh, internet is available but it's not as accessible. So uh, I would like that you talk a little more about this. W what is the huge barrier in your country, the social access or the physical barriers, and how internet governance can help you to face this problem. Thank you, Ariane. Do we have more questions? Any more questions? No? Anyone inventing one? Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so please, final remarks and answering the questions. Please, Mary, first. All right. Thank you very much. In my speech, I said internet may be available, but not accessible because the adjacent infrastructure to charge your device to be able to access the internet might not be there. Okay? You don't have power. That's energy, electricity. So that's what I mean by adjacent infrastructure, electricity inf infrastructure, because to access the internet, you need the electricity. And the electricity, if there's no power, the, the internet might be available in your area, but you can't charge your, your device, so you can't hook onto the internet. That's what I mean by that. Then there's also the cultural barrier. The culture, as I said, that women, some women may not be allowed to access the internet because some of them are in Puda. Uh, I have another person from Nigeria who lives in the north. He can explain it better. Um, Husbands don't allow their wives to be seen, so you don't have access. They, they believe that internet will expose you much, so you are covered. So that's the cultural barrier. And I talked about the physical barrier, that, that, the, the, that is, internet is not available at all, so you cannot access the internet. So there's no broadband or there's no internet access. About um, 40, over 40% 40 of Nigerians have internet access to the internet by using the, mo the mobile broadband. But the, 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 fix the fixed broadband is not there. So uh, th those are physical barriers that we, that I don't know whether I've answered your question. Yes. What more? No. Is that? I, I, I was satisfied. Okay. It's pretty good. Thank All right you. then, thanks. Well, I, I, will, I will let the, the speakers volunteer to, to make final remarks, and we just end the session. Okay, we, we have uh, f about four minutes to, to the end of the session, so whoever... Uh, I want to ask a okay. question. Uh, what are we taking away from here, from this session? What is it that we are taking away that we can share in our own environment? What are the... How have you solved particular problem in your own um, uh, environment to be able to, for others to learn. Thank you. I just want to make a compliment. Uh, I would like to uh, highlight the, that the preponderance of Facebook, which acts as a monopoly planetary monopoly uh, has been comp compromising the cultural diversity uh, in our country and in Latin America also because we rest uh, as a prisoner, uh, 
prisoner uh, of the algorithm of the Facebook in the, the, the feed, uh, uh, the pages in Facebook, then I think it's important to discuss the, the power of the, the great platforms. That's it. Thank you, Flavia. Excuse me. Anyone else? Yeah. Babu, please. Yep. Uh, um, we always talk about uh, new technology and, and uh, a country like uh, Nepal having that kind of geographical uh, uh, landscape, uh, we always explore new technology uh, in this. Uh, we have been uh, talking about TV white space. Uh, do uh, we have uh, in this room uh, any experience in your uh, country that uh, use uh, TV white space and, and it will be contributive to uh, our country like that? Well, so you are entitled to, to talk about this, to Julian and, and Paul. Uh, we just uh, implement TV white spaces in um, Colombia uh, in a community network. <clears throat> and Colombia is a very difficult country because uh, um, uh, we have too many uh, mountains in rural areas and we found out that this technology uh, really um, contributes to get to very those difficult areas and um, also from from all the other participants uh, I believe that um, 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 uh, it's important to consider community networks as an alternative to uh, get connected those that are not yet connected because uh, it's already more than 20 years that we see that there are not uh, concrete opportunities for them, even if the technology has been evolving uh, in the last years uh, with open uh, and free uh, software and hardware. Uh, uh, we believe that um, working with the community, identifying with them, designing with them the um, uh, networks, they can get their own connectivity. Okay, please, Paul. Okay, just, 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 just two things very fastly. Uh, one, we can take this conversation offline, but yeah. my role is I'm a TV white space, uh, I deploy TV white space across Africa, most countries. <laughs> uh, but I, I just think my takeaway from this is that uh, we, we need uh, our citizens to know that uh, spectrum belongs to the people, it doesn't belong to the government. And uh, we, we need uh, to educate our people on their digital rights so they start demanding strong, more strongly, <laughs> uh, access. Well, we run out of time. Uh, I, I will kindly ask for you to, to take this offline as, as Paul suggested. And I think we, we can have good conversations offline. Uh, thank you for all of you. Uh, thank you for all of the speakers and for the audience. Thank you for the secretary, the IGF secretary, to, to make it possible to, to execute this session because it was very difficult to, to put it on. So thanks, thanks for all. And that's it, end of the session.